Muhammad and the last monotheists of old, Prophet Muhammad's kindness to animals. Description, Prophet Muhammad's mission was not only to bring the truth to an idolatrous world, but also to aid those few Hanifs and people of the scripture who still clung to true monotheism. When Prophet Muhammad, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, was sent with God's message to humanity. His mission was not only to bring the truth to a world steeped in ignorance and idolatry, but also to come to the aid of those few people who still clung to true monotheism. Some of them were from the people of the scripture. Others were from among the Hanifs, pre-Islamic non-Jewish or non-Christian monotheists who rejected idolatry in their society, of Arabia who remained upon the true teachings of Abraham and Ishmael. Peace be upon them both. The message of Islam also came in support of all the previous messengers of God, peace be upon them. This is part of the meaning of God's statement. We will without doubt help our messengers and those who believe both in the life of this world and on the day when the witnesses will stand forth. Quran 40 51 I will make my messengers and those who believe in what they brought victorious in this world by making their proof manifest and by supporting them against their enemies. And I shall make them victorious on the day of judgment by entering them into paradise and punishing their disputants in this world by entering them into the fire. This is after the people of truth from the prophets, angels bear witness regarding the message being conveyed and the denial of the disbelieving nations. On the day when no excuse will benefit those who wrong themselves by disbelief and sin, and they will be distanced on that day from Allah's mercy. And for them is the evil abode and painful punishment. Gaffer, 51-52 When Prophet Muhammad was sent by God in the heart of the Arabian Peninsula, the stronghold of idolatry and paganism, he was a lone man standing on one side with all of humanity standing on the other. He was a stranger whose estrangement was total and absolute. The difference between the severe estrangement that he faced and the estrangement experienced by the Hanifs like Zayb ibn Amr ibn Nufail and those that remained of the people of the scriptures that they were the remnants of what was before. They were like the last golden rays of sunshine before the sunset that show from the tops of trees and buildings for a few fleeting moments before disappearing for good. Prophet Muhammad on the other hand started out as a stranger but was a portent of the great good that was to come and of the success that truth and Islam were going to have. He was like the first rays of sunshine that appear right before sunrise, foretelling growth, life, renewal, and glad tidings that after a few fleeting moments fill the sky with light. Those monotheists that lived during the age of ignorance had resigned themselves to the way things were in despair of effecting any reform. The most any one of them could hope to do was to keep aloof from the customs, practices, and beliefs of the times of ignorance and possibly mention some point of truth to an assembly of people or maybe protect some oppressed person from injury. This was definitely not a common practice of theirs, nor did they entertain in their hearts any notion of standing in the midst of their people and calling them to monotheism. They cannot be faulted for this. Anyone who studies their lives, their circumstances, and their poetry cannot help but to feel their greatness and hold them in the highest esteem for their probity and their willingness to seek out the truth and follow it in the dark and ignorant age in which they lived. They were people who had the willingness to break free from and reject the norms and constraints of their environment and what a hostile environment it was. Prophet Muhammad indicated how universal and absolute the corruption was at that time, encompassing all peoples and every aspect of life without exception. Iyad ibn Hamar al-Mujashi'i relates that Prophet Muhammad said in one of his sermons, Verily God looked at the denizens of the earth and despised them, the Arabs among them and the non-Arabs, except for a few people who remained of the true people of the scripture, Sahih Muslim. In the face of such universal ignorance, true reform required a new divine message, a new mission and a new undertaking. It needed a generation willing to make sacrifices to spread this message and the dedication to further what they believe in. It needed a unique and extraordinary leadership possessing all the necessary and rare qualities to carry out such an endeavor. That leadership came in the form of Prophet Muhammad, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, and his companions who came after him. Their generation was unparalleled, as it was molded by the guidance and teachings of God's messenger. Their legacy is ours. No matter how difficult our circumstances become in calling people to the truth, we are supported by God's final message, which he has preserved for humanity. Prophet Muhammad's Kindness to Animals Description, Prophet Muhammad cautions humankind to be merciful towards all living creatures. When we mention the religion of Islam, often the first word that comes to mind is peace. The word Islam is derived from the infinitive salama which also is the root for the word salam, which means peace. 
Islam is a way of life that promotes peace, dignity, respect, tolerance, justice and mercy and all of these qualities are tempered with serenity, calmness, that comes from submission to God. Perhaps the greatest of these qualities is mercy. It is one of the overriding themes throughout the Quran. Certainly, we have brought them a book, the Quran, which we have explained in detail with knowledge, guidance, and a mercy to a people who believe. Quran 752 And Allah has indeed sent them this Quran, the scripture revealed to Muhammad, peace be upon him, explaining it and clarifying all things with his knowledge. It guides the believers to the right path and to the truth, and is a mercy for them because of what it guides them to, of goodness in this world and in the afterlife. Those who disbelieve in reality only wait for what they have been warned, a painful punishment in the afterlife as a result of their actions. The believers were also foretold about the reward of that day. Those who ignored the Quran in the life of this world, not acting according to hat is in it, will then say, Indeed the messengers of our Lord came with the truth, in which there was no doubt. If only there was a mediator who could now plead on our behalf so we could be excused from the punishment. Or if only we could return to the life of the world to do good actions that would save us instead of the bad we committed. The disbelievers have lost themselves, gaining their own ruin because of their disbelief. Those who they used to worship beside Allah have abandoned them and can be of no help to them. Al Araf 52 53. Mercy is that ethereal quality that embodies gentleness, piety, care, consideration, love, and forgiveness. When these qualities are observable in this world, they are a mere reflection of God's mercy towards his creation. God said clearly that Prophet Muhammad, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, was a mercy for all of creation, not just his family and friends or the Arab nation, or the people of the 7th century CE, and not for human beings alone. And we have sent you O Muhammad not but as a mercy for all of humankind, jinn, and all that exists. Quran 21 107 O Muhammad! I have not sent you as a messenger, except as a merciful one to the whole of creation. This is because you are distinguished with aspiring for the guidance of all people and their safety from the punishment of Allah. Say, O Messenger, it is only revealed to me from my Lord that your true deity is only one, he has no partner, and he is Allah. So submit to believing in him, and acting in his obedience. Prophet Muhammad was the embodiment of mercy, he showed compassion to all those around him, family, orphans, friends, strangers and even enemies. He also treated the environment and animals with respect and mercy. He taught his followers that because animals were part of God's creation they should be treated with dignity and due care. The traditions of Prophet Muhammad remind us that humankind was put on this earth to be the custodian of God's creation. Treating animals with kindness and mercy is just one of the responsibilities embedded in that custodianship. Prophet Muhammad's words and behavior make it clear that causing defenseless creatures pain and suffering is not only completely unacceptable, but we will also be answerable to God for such actions. If someone kills a sparrow for sport, the sparrow will cry out on the day of judgment, O Lord! That person killed me in vain. He did not kill me for any useful purpose. Son Nana Nasai the Prophet, may the mercy and blessings of God be upon him, said, Whoever kills a sparrow or anything bigger than that without a just cause, God will hold him accountable on the day of judgment. The listeners asked, O Messenger of God, what is a just cause? He replied, That he will kill it to eat. Not simply to chop off its head and then throw it away. Ibid. Islam expects humankind to treat all animals, all living creatures, birds, sea creatures, and insects, with respect and dignity. Prophet Muhammad continuously advised people to show kindness. He forbade the practice of cutting tails and manes of horses, of branding animals at any soft spot, and of keeping horses saddled unnecessarily, Sahih Muslim. If the Prophet saw any animal overburdened or ill-fed he would speak mildly to the owner and say, Fear God in your treatment of animals. Abu Dawud However, refraining from physical cruelty is not enough, abstaining from mental cruelty is equally as important. Even a bird's emotional distress should be treated seriously. One of Prophet Muhammad's companions narrates, We were on a journey and during the Prophet's absence, we saw a bird with its two chicks, we took them. The mother bird was circling above us in the air, beating its wings in grief. When Prophet Muhammad returned he said, Who has hurt the feelings of this bird by taking its chicks? Return them to her. Sahih Muslim In another narration, a companion of the Prophet came to him carrying baby chicks in his clothing and mentioned that the mother bird had hovered over them. He was directed to return the chicks back to the same bush, Abu Dawud. 
In pre-Islamic times, pagan superstitions and polytheistic practices included acts of torture and cruelty to animals. Islam condemned this and put a stop to all such practices. When Prophet Muhammad and his companions migrated to Medina, they noticed that people cut off camels' humps and the fat tails of sheep for food. The Prophet forbade them from them from doing this and said, Whatever is cut off an animal while it is still alive, is carrion and is unlawful to eat. at -Tirmidhi. In Islam, the rules pertaining to slaughtering animals are very strict and fixed. Protecting animals from pain and undue suffering is paramount. God has ordained kindness and excellence in everything. If the killing of animals is to be done, do it in the best manner, and when you slaughter, do it in the best manner by first sharpening the knife and putting the animal at ease. Sahih Muslim When you set your dog for the chase, mention the name of God if he catches the game, and you reach it while it is still alive, cut its throat quickly so it won't suffer. Sahih Bukhari and Muslim Humankind must strike a balance in their treatment of animals. All living creatures were put on this earth by God for our benefit. They are not at the same level as human beings but neither should they be treated cruelly. It is humankind's responsibility to see that they have food, water, and shelter from the elements. Living creatures must not be overburdened, abused, or tortured and doing so will surely result in God's just punishment. A true believer in God demonstrates his or her belief by respecting the entire creation, and Prophet Muhammad's character and actions are a shining example of respect for all that exists.